What we've been telling, talking about is how we can use a capacitor to store energy. And what I'm going to show you here is a demonstration of this effect. We have a capacitor here. It's a fairly large one. It's 26 microfarads. But more importantly, it's a high voltage capacitor. So we can, in fact, charge it up to a potential of well over 4,000 volts, 4 kilovolts. Up here, I have a wire, very thin wire, that's suspended between these two electrodes. And we'll cover that up for reasons that you'll see in a few minutes. So we'll turn this on and start it charging. And you'll notice how the voltage across the capacitor, in fact, increases fairly slowly. And this is because it's a large capacitor, and we're putting a large voltage across it. So it actually takes some time to store up the energy. So we're now up to 1 kilovolt, 1,000 volts. OK, now we're rapidly approaching 4 kilovolts, 4,000 volts. And what I'm going to do in just a moment is to take the knife switch at the back and throw it so that the capacitor will then be discharged through this very thin wire. You'll notice there's quite a lot of energy packed in that. In fact, that wire lasts rather less than a millisecond, so we're dumping a great deal of the energy of that capacitor through the wire. Now, there's a very important thing to remember about this. That is acting rather like a fuse. So in fact, we've still got quite a lot of energy stored in the capacitor. And one of the mistakes you can easily make with this experiment is to think that you've lost all of the energy out of the capacitor. You haven't. In the old days, we used exploding wires for photography when we wanted a very, very short exposure time. You can, in fact, get down well below a thousandth of a second if you design the system properly. So you can get, for example, these quite dramatic pictures of water drops actually falling into water and splashing up and freezing the whole motion.